Hey everyone, welcome back to Shadowwood. By the time you see this video, the first test build should be available. It's Monday night. I want to actually try to post it late Tuesday night. So I'm not going to be messing with it too much in the meantime, but I'll show you I've added these controller aids to the menus now. They show you which button you need to press to advance, and if you rebind your buttons, the controller aids will adapt to the new layout as well. And if you feel like they're unnecessary, you can just turn them off in the options menu. You can see here I've darkened out multiplayer from the main menu, as that won't be available for the test build, but the options from the main menu are now operational. Everything should work, except that there is a problem with enabling VR in this screen. If you enable VR here, it gets reset when you enter the game. That's what I want to fix tonight. Okay, and we should be squared away on this now, so if you... I gotta be on the screen here. If you uh, go down to options, and then enable the VR, you can then now... Um, Go back here and you can keep your headset on. Don't have to uh, do anything here. And you're still in VR. And you're good to go. Um, once again, if you're uh, trying out the test build, um, keep in mind that you can always reset where you're uh, centered on your when you're in VR here if you just hit the space bar. So if it's a little bit off, you can just tap the space bar and you should be recentered again. It's just based on whatever direction you're looking at So You can spin it around all the way to your right or all the way like this. And you can also move around within your play space here. So I'm backing up. Um, of course, you gotta be able to reach your space bar, but however you wanna situate yourself, uh, I gotta figure out where my space bar is. Okay, there it is. So, um, however you want to situate yourself, you can do it within your play space, just as long as you or somebody is able to hit the space bar for you. So, should be all set on that now. Okay, it's Tuesday night now. I've done a couple of last minute additions, and I've added some sound effects to the melee weapons. And also sound effects for reloading a gun. However, last night I made a build and ran it. But for some reason, if you change things in the options menu and then back out, your changes are lost. So I need to figure out what's causing that. Okay, I do believe I have solved the riddle here. So what was happening is this game manager object here, when you start up the game, it loads in your save data, so all, all of your options and configurations, how you want uh, the game to play, it loads, loads those in. Uh, but then if you want to change those, you go into options and you make whatever adjustments you want. And when you're done, you hit back and it should save those changes. The problem was, was that, um, so for instance here, if you hit turned off the controller aid and hit back. Now you can see the controller aid is, is still gone. Um, but what was happening was this game manager was getting reloaded every time you went to this main menu here. So it was, and it was reloading your options before it was actually saving the changes that you had made. So you would make changes and then it would load in from the save file and then it would save after that so it was just basically overriding any changes that you made so you were always stuck with the, your, the initial state so that should be functional now and the changes that we make stick so what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to uh, build it out again and make sure uh, as quickly as I can that there aren't any other uh, glaring issues like that. Uh, I know that there are a few issues that aren't going to be ironed out. I will be making another short video kind of explaining uh, how to play this and um, things to look out for and the kind of general feedback I'm looking for. Um, and I will put a link to that video in the description of this video. And uh, I think that's going to be all I work on tonight is getting the uh, 
test build uploaded and out there and available. It's Thursday night now. The test build is up and out there. You can access it through the Danger Quest Studios Twitter account, link in the description. And by the way, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll keep up to date with all the progress of Shadowwood. But anyway, there's a link to the download as well as a link to a video explaining the test build. At the moment, I'm in a little bit of a rest period. To some extent, I'm waiting on more feedback for the test build, but I'm also thinking about what exactly I want to tackle next. The multiplayer is the next big goal, but I think I want to tackle something a little smaller first. I'm considering working on a monster for the game, or maybe just working on fixing some known issues that already exist. Another possibility is that I start planning out the enemy AI a little bit. Ideally I'd like a general AI that I could apply to all my monsters, with a bunch of different variables that I could tweak to make them behave very differently. I'm going to sleep on it tonight and figure out what to tackle tomorrow. It's Saturday morning now, and the question of what I'm going to work on next, it turns out, has been answered for me. Thanks to some feedback from people who tried the test build, I've learned the build wasn't handling the Oculus Rift correctly. It was putting people underground, and the camera for the headset was rotating twice as fast as you would rotate your head. So when you turn 90 degrees, the camera is actually turning 180. Not great. Fortunately, the problem is just that I had an older version of the Steam VR plugin, so I've updated that now. Unfortunately, when I did that, a lot of Shadowwood settings got screwed up. I lost all of my input setup, and the lighting is not behaving when I build out the game. It works fine in the Unity editor, but in a build, not so much. After I updated the Steam VR plugin, I also updated the tune shader I'm using, but one of the variables on all my materials was turning the objects black, so I had to go through and adjust them all. Upon completing that, I tested the game and was attacked by invisible wolves. They are now visible again. It was another instance where the Steam VR plugin update overrode some of my settings, and eliminated the layer the wolves were displaying on. The fix for the rift is now up. Please download it, give it a run, and hit me up with feedback. Special thanks to Chicken McFrodo for his feedback on the test build and helping me get the issue sorted. If you're interested in this project, please like, subscribe, and follow on Twitter. All that dumb stuff really does help bring attention to the project. That's going to do it for this week's devlog. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next time.